How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at doing some user and role configurations. It's actually very, very straightforward inside of 6.5 and 6.7. So I'll go ahead and dive into the configuration. So basically, there's initially, there's a couple of users and roles that we're gonna talk about. So on the, under the manage tab, you go to security and users. User wise, we have just the root user and it's got the description of administrator. If we go under roles, we can see the administrator here has full access rights. And then we have a number of other specific roles that have been defined for a variety of lo different levels of access. Now this is all fine and dandy, but if you want to be more specific than what is already available here, you can do so. The thing is you'd have to right click here on host over here in the upper, upper left hand corner, right click here and go to permissions. And then from here, you can create a role. So actually, sorry, wrong place. You can create a role here. So we're gonna create a role and the role name is going to be, we'll say uh, network operation center or NOC. And what we wanna do is from a virtual machine perspective, you click on here and you can click inside of here and it's going to give you some specifics. So if you, by clicking at, uh, on the root of the icon of the object, it automatically enables all of the other ones. So if we were to uncheck it and then go to virtual machine, all these are unchecked now. If I go to interact, I can come in here and I can say power on, power off, and then I wanna look at the, the console interact right here, which means Basically, what this is basically saying is I want someone that's lower level, like support or network operations or whatever the case might be, to be able to at least log into the host and then if a user is reporting connectivity issues with their VM, they can power the VM off, power the VM back on, and then access the console. Okay, that's basically what you're doing. They won't be able to do anything else. They won't be able to edit settings, Powering it on, powering it off, all that type of stuff will be available to them. That's basically what we're gonna be doing and creating. I'm not gonna show you any of the other ones like root or anything like that, because obviously read only means you can only see what's going on. Root, uh, root means you can do everything. So I'm gonna click on add. And right now we have this knock, and knock has access to, we can go edit roll, and we can do whatever we want. So right now all it's got is um, virtual machine, and if we, click inside of here, um, again, we by, I goofed up by uh, in the interact, let's click inside of here. If you click on, if you click the check mark, it automatically grabs everybody. Um, interact, we'll go to, again, power off, power on, and then console interact, click save. And if we were to click on it, and then you wanna see what something is, You'd be able to go to edit roll, and then don't click on the, the square inside of the square, click on this right here. And then it'll show you what you can what you can do specifically. So I wanted to show you that before I did anything else. Now that we've created this, we need to go back to users, and I'll create a user. So I'll add user, the username will be knock, and the description will be knock, and the password will be some password that you define. We're gonna click on add. Now that we've done that, now we have to go over to here, go right click and go to permissions. And then lastly, what we'll do is we'll go ahead in here and add user. We're going to select user, knock, and we're going to select the role of knock. So now we're good. We scroll down here and everything else looks good. We're gonna go ahead and add user and close. So we know we're in good shape there. Now we're gonna have that set up. So now what I can do is I can come up here. I can come up, click on here and say log out. We go ahead and log in as knock and the password that I defined. Log in, don't save. And so now I won't be able to make modifications to anything or anything like that, I will have to go in and, like for example, if I was to click on Windows Server 2012 R2 here, 
you'll notice that interaction-wise, if I go to edit, I shouldn't be able to click on anything. So if we cancel out of that, if we click on edit again, yeah, error occurred. So it won't let us do that. If we right click on, we have shut down, we can suspend and restart. If we go to actions, we can do power, we can click on edit settings, try to edit, but it shouldn't let us do anything. It's because when it goes to check and does a, a access check, it realizes, oh, well, you can't do this. We're just going to say that there's a problem. So I can click on here and launch remote console. And we're going to do this open link. And what should end up happening is we get a console pop up. Again, this is console interaction. We're going to trust the certificate from the host, connect anyway. And then once it loads, we should be able to interact with it from a power off perspective. Give that a second to pull up. Okay, so now we're in here. So if we come down here and we go to manage and virtual machine settings, we should not be able to uh, make changes. So if we were to go in here and say, uh, you know, we, we'd have to power off first, but we shouldn't be able to make any significant changes and stuff like that. So we're gonna click okay there. If I was to come in here and do a power and then a power shutdown guest, I could do that. And now that what this doesn't prevent me from doing is logging into the VM and doing things. So I'd still be able to log in and all that type of stuff. But being able to make modification changes to the configuration should not be allowed. So uh, with that being said, that's pretty much where we are in terms of that. I'm going to close that out and actually close out these guys as well from our previous video. And we are pretty much done. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about Active Directory integration. Because we have DC1. We're going to talk about that real quick. We have DC1 set up here. And DC1 is 10.255.1.51. And what we want to do is we want to go back to Windows 10. And what I'm going to do is on the Manage tab here, click on him. Actually, I've got to exit out first before I make any, do anything. All right, now that we have gone through and done these, the local users, the next thing we're gonna go do is set up the connectivity to the ESXi host through Active Directory. But it's not exactly straightforward. So we actually have to use the legacy client. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that, about that more here in just a minute. I wanna show you the specific pieces inside of ESXi 6.5, and then we'll take a look at how you can go to the thick client and make those modification changes. So we're gonna to go to, click up here on manage. Give that a second to respond. Then we're gonna go over here to security and users. And then we have to go to authentication. So right now we haven't done anything. So we're gonna click on join domain. And in here we're gonna type in lab.local. And then we're going to Plug in the username is going to be administrator. And then the password we set up when we configured the AD account. We're going to join domain. And it should be able to join the AD account or AD domain, which it looks like it was. There we go. We're logged in. So now what we're going to go do is we're actually going to go over to the vSphere thick client. So I'm going to right click on here. And I'm going to go to VMware vSphere Thick Client. And I'm going to, from the drop down, I'm going to choose 65 2 and then log in as root, and then type in the password again. And we need to do this because there's no clean way of going through and setting up the group authentication mechanism through the web client. So this is what we have to do. So here, in just a moment, it'll pop up. So no different than that of 6.0, if you've ever done that. We're gonna click on okay, once this guy boots up. And then we're gonna go to configuration. And then we're gonna click on authentication services. And we're gonna see that we are logged in via Active Directory. The next thing we have to do is we have to go to permissions. And notice we don't have any users, right? 
or uh, any, we've only got the default set up. So this is where you don't want to set up a bunch of local users, you want to just use Active Directory. And you have a fallback to the local user accounts. So we're going to go to permissions, we're going to right click in here and go add permissions. Then I'm going to click on add. And one of the things that I have to do here on the server level is the actual ESXi host itself. If you hit the drop down box, you'll get lab. In here, you get lab, oops, and it'll automatically do a poll. So it'll go out to the domain controller and go, hey buddy, what's your information? What kind of groups do you have? So we can just scroll down here to domain admins because that's where we are. And we're gonna click on add. It adds it to the groups. So lab backslash domain admins. We're gonna click on okay. And then we have to choose a role to assign to those users. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna click on administrator and I'm gonna click on okay. So now that we've done that, we should be okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and close, I'm gonna log out here. Because if we go back to roles and users, we're not gonna see a whole lot going on here. Nothing really pops up for us. But if I click on here and I say log out, I should be able to log in as administrator and then my password. And if I say don't save, that should allow me to log in. It should authenticate against Active Directory, and it does. So it says administrator at esxi65-2.lab.local. So I have been able to authenticate, and you can see that. So we did a join, domain join. We did a entity permissions and all that type of stuff. So then you can do the same thing over here. If I log out here, let me close out of this guy. Let me minimize this. And if I double click here, this is where having the this set up is kind of a cool feature. So let me log in here. So what I can do, if you come up here to the start menu and you hover over this, I'm logged in as administrator. So what I can what I can do now is I can just click on use session credentials right here and it does lab backslash administrator and click on log in and that should be all I need to do. So I'm using the Windows session credentials and then passing my AD credentials up to the AD controller and that should let me log in and there it is. So I was able to use my Windows session credentials to log in with. And here I am, if I click on OK, you know I'm good. So now if I look in the lower right hand corner of my screen, it says I'm logged in as lab backslash administrator. So these are just a couple of the things you'd want to take into consideration when you're trying to do Active Directory based authentication. So you still need the thick client even if you don't want to use it. This is one of those uh, specific issues that do pop up that you would need to know and know, uh, have to work with. So with that being said, that's basically what I wanted to cover in this video. So until next time guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me and we'll catch you guys in the next video.